Okay, guys, let's get started. Uh, it seems the microphone is broken today, but who the fuck cares? Yeah. So um, today, um, last week, how exciting is that? La uh, last week of the term. I know this has been a long term. Um, for you, surely. Uh, for me, it has been a long term. Uh, we have the last week. Um, what I was thinking about this last week is that uh, I didn't want to introduce any new content, so I'm just going to, I don't know, provide some space to maybe clarify some questions concerning the exam or have an opportunity to revisit some material, right? So if there are any things that you want me to revisit, uh, then I can go into depth into that a little bit. I prepared um, some stuff about exam particulars so that you are not surprised, so that you know sort of how the whole thing looks like and, uh, you know, uh, just the things um, that uh, you will see. But uh, other than that, really, this is now an opportunity to address some issues, you know, uh, I don't know, starting with some administrative stuff, although I most likely don't know the answer to that. I don't know these kind of things. Uh, but if you do have some stuff, you know, this is now the opportunity to address them yeah? because the exam is coming up quickly and uh, I won't be reachable uh, before the exam. So if there's anything, we need to sort it out now. Okay, exam preparation. So um, what I brought with me first. So uh, take out your phones, your computers, whatever you have, right? So if there uh, is, take out your phone, go to this website, goboat.at. We had that at the beginning, and remember. So now here it is again. Go to this website, type in the code. It's kind of funny, it's not just that the microphone is working, it looks like the whole audio equipment is gone here. So I think somebody necked that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, take your phone out and um, based on that, I will decide what I talk about today. Okay, so we've got some stuff. Um, let's see. Social networks coming up. Broken windows, segregation. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me see, based on that, I'll come back to that in a, in a little bit. First, let me talk about sort of the exam particulars, you know, as I said, and um, also about what, I, what I'm thinking about next, week, uh, next Wednesday. You know, next Wednesday is another opportunity for us to revisit some stuff, 
uh, to come come back to some of the topics. So maybe maybe we'll uh, talk about some of the things that you're just bringing up here today, and and some other ones on on Wednesday. But what do I'm planning to do on Wednesday as well? Let's also have a big quiz, like a big quiz, you know, like uh, so if you, I don't know, bring your phone, your computer, or whatever, um, like. Um, uh, some questions that I'm going to ask you, they're going to be different than exam questions, but it's going to be a good opportunity to see if you understood the material, if you are on top of things, or it will be good for you to identify uh, the things that you uh, should, should spend some more time on. Yeah. So that's sort of the big quiz. Actually, it's exciting. I played this with my first years. They loved it. Yeah. Anyway, so let's see. Let's have that on Wednesday. So that's what we're going to have on Wednesday. Okay, so uh, I brought some stuff about exam particulars and then, you know, catching up. So uh, we might revisit some of the stuff that you just brought up. And I just might bring up some of the slides that I had before, you know. So just let's see how that, how that goes. First of all, uh, you do need to study for this class, obviously, right? So if you don't study, it's not going to work out. I have no problem failing you. Uh, so you do need to sit down. You do need to study. And, um, but that's also a very, once you kind of realize that, it's, a, it's very liberating, I think, when you realize that when you do prepare for stuff, uh, um, there's a very good chance that it works out, right? So if you prepare for your exams, and it's just a, not just my class, but for other ones as well, if you prepare, you have nothing to be afraid of, right? So then you just go into the exam and you just, you just do what you always do. Uh, you just prepare prepare the things, right? So how do you prepare or what do you prepare? You know, and that's sometimes the difficult, difficult part that freaks people out or that, that freaked me out, you know, when I never knew what, to, what I had to do. But uh, you know, I hope that I was, that was clear on what is expected from you or how you should approach this. Remember, we had uh, the lectures and the lectures were based on readings and on the readings there were some required readings. So there's a reason for that, that there were some required readings. You take out of that what you want. But um, so it's a very good, it's a very good strategy to revisit the lectures while you have all the material, right? You have all the, even the exact words what I said. Yeah. Uh, you you can you can look that up. It's available, and uh, you have the slides, and you see what the lectures were based on. When you look closer at our syllabus, let me, let me quickly bring that up. Um, let me bring that up. Um, so we had the syllabus here at the beginning, I remember. That's nothing new. Uh, when you looked closely, we didn't, we didn't cover all of the material, right? So at some point, you know, we didn't cover some of the last ones. Uh, so obviously, they are not relevant for the exam. So whatever we didn't cover, uh, it's not going to be relevant for the exam. For example, we did not talk about everything that follows after uh, networks. We talked about networks. This is pretty much the end. Yeah? This is sort of where we, where we ended up with networks and then with the friendship paradox, which was basically based on this reading. Here. Yeah. But then everything that follows after that is... Um, is not relevant for the exam. Yeah, so I won't ask you something that about something that I didn't talk about during the lecture. Yeah. It's really just the material that I talked about in the lecture. But uh, you know, I don't know if you want to get an A in this, uh, you need to have done the background readings for the required stuff. Right. So everything that follows after that is not it's not relevant. And even if you look closer, you know, I even gave you some hints here. What sort of the story? Of, uh, of these topics, what is sort of the key message in a way that we, uh, that we take out of this. And uh, I know there are lots of readings, you know, there are all these further readings, so that's sort of if you, if you are interested in something, if you want to get more into something, maybe further down the line or maybe further down in the, in the, in the future. Okay, let me bring back the slides. Okay, yeah. And and when you, once you do that, so go back to the, to the, um, to the lectures, you know, have a look at the slides, have a look, I don't know, revisit some of the, some of the videos, some of the audio, listen to it, or do whatever you want, um, 
to, uh, to, uh, to study the material, have a look at the background readings, especially the quiet material, then there's really nothing to be afraid of, right? So I'm always interested in what makes people, what makes people successful, why are some people more successful than others? You know, actually, I, I study these kind of things as well, so I, I write papers about these kind of things. But I'm just also just generally interested in these kind of things, so that I can tell you, you know, so that um, that, that you can become more successful. And when you look at what sports people do, uh, you always see them walking around with their headphones on. Right? So this is Michael Phelps. Maybe some of you remember him. He's uh, this kick-ass swimmer who won, I think, 18 gold medals, He's an absolute record holder, seven times world champion in different disciplines and so on. So it's just really badass. And, um, but not only him, but lots of other people, you know, they always walk in with their headphones. Why do they do that? Well, because they, they, don't, want to, they don't want to do anything, anything special during that, let's say, Olympic uh, gold final, but they just want to do what they always do. They just want to do, and that's what they, what they do with this music, they put themselves into the zone where they, um, where they just go back to their practice routines. They do that all the time. They swim thousands of kilometers per year, uh, and, and they just have this music in that sense to put them into this um, context of not doing anything different than what they normally do. So that's, I think, that's sort of the, the key. You know, that also helps. You know, some people freak out about exams, others less. Um, but even if you are not the freaking out type, it really helps. You know, and once you kind of understand that, that once you prepare, and then all you need to do, you just need to do what you always do. You just need to tell me what you know. Right? So I can only give you a grade for what, what you tell me what, what you know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you, what you really know. I, really, I only see what you, what you write in the exam. And, uh, and that's, that's then all you have to do. So there's nothing, nothing special about that. So really just um, prepare, study for this, and uh, the exam is going to be easy. If you study for this, right? That's kind of the thing. And in that context, you know, it's also important. I know it's still a while. I think the exam is uh, on the 19th or 18th. I think I have it on, on one slide. So it's still a while, right? And I know there are other exams that you guys have to focus on. There's other stuff that you have to study and so on. But, but uh, sit down and make yourself a plan. So this is the busy time of the year. Sit down and make yourself a plan so that you don't end up um, running out of, uh, of time and out of preparation time for, for the one or the other exam. Right? So in that sense, um, oh, it's kind of interesting to me to see how the exams are so close to the, to the, to the end of term. I'm used to... to different modes, but, uh, but that means that you don't have that much time, really. Right? You actually have more than others. You know, my first years, they write the exam, I think, already next week, or, or just a few days after that, which is very close to the end of the term. You have a little more time, but don't forget that you do need to prepare and that you need to make a plan about this, you know, to do whatever you need to do um, to, to, to get ready for this. Okay, let me talk about some exam particulars some stuff so that we all know how things will look like. When is the exam? Mm. The information that I have is that on the 19th of May at 6 in the evening in the RDS. What a weird time to have an exam, but at the very least you can start drinking straight afterwards. So RDS, you know where that is. I don't know where it is, but I don't know, you know where it is. I hope. Uh, if you don't, I don't know, find it out. Um, if, you are, if there are any special arrangements, um, you know, sometimes we have that, um, I don't know, people writing differently or, you know, you, you know when you are in a, in a special category. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that. Uh, but then there might be different arrangements, so then you might uh, have your exam elsewhere, but you were informed about that, you know, the university contacts you and that information then counts. But if there are other troubles, um, get in touch with our undergraduate administrator. She knows these things. She's very nice. You know, she's very helpful, Deirdre. Um, so I'm sure she's, she's very eager to, to help you. So, so, yeah, so um, the best way to get, I don't know, if you do have uh, um, some questions, you know, just really get started with studying. You know. 
that sort of uh, once you study stuff, things become clear. And um, yeah, what else? Okay, so this is how the exam is going to look like. I come back to that in a, in a little bit, but just so so that you see, you know, this is actually from the actual exam. Uh, you will have two hours. You will have to choose three out of five questions, um, which gives you, I don't know, a little more than 45 minutes for answering each question. But uh, I come back to that. Some people benefit from having study groups. You know, I always like that. I always think that's a good idea to sit down, at the very least, to give you the feeling that you're not alone in this. But, um, but also, sometimes, you know, other folks know something, have an answer to a problem that you might be wondering about, you know. So collectively, actually we talked about that. You know, I showed you that collectively folks are much more, or often, much cleverer. There's the wisdom of the crowd. So the wisdom of the crowd is not just something that we talk here about, but it's actually, actually useful, right? And you know, as I might have mentioned several times already, this is the resource that stays with you. Uh, that's the resource that stays with you long after you forget about folks like me who tell you stuff. You know, some dudes that stand in front of you with beards and gray hair and tell you things about sociology. Uh, you remember the folks around you. These are your peers. They are with you for the longest time. So make use of them. Okay, if there are some questions, you know, as I said, peers, uh, we also have this discussion forum. And on Blackboard, I don't know, it's just an opportunity. Uh, maybe uh, it's helpful, maybe it's not, I don't know. So ask your peers. Deirdre is our undergraduate administrator. Maybe some of you already were in touch with her about various issues. So she's extremely, extremely helpful for all these administrative things, right? If there are some special arrangements or, I don't know, you get sick or, or I don't know, these kind of things, get in touch with her. Uh, I don't really know these things anyway, right? so I'm new to this university, so I'm, the best I can do is ask Deirdre, yeah? so you can also directly ask her. But if there are any other questions, you know, feel free to contact me, get in touch with me, you have my details, or you can find them out. Okay, but before that, um, let me mention, you know, as I said, uh, I will not be available after next week, Wednesday, so if you have any questions, directly to me that require my attention or my intervention, um, it needs to be done by next Tuesday, the latest. Yeah. It's not just that I, I don't know, I don't want to answer stuff uh, before your exam anymore, I just, I'm, just not, I'm just not here. Yeah. I just might not have internet connection, I'm going to be hiking somewhere in the mountains in Spain, which is going to be awesome, really looking forward to it. Uh, but I might be cut off civilization and uh, internet and, and, and you guys. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, if there are any questions later on, you know, I hope to have addressed most of them. Um, I might get a chance to respond to things, but, um, but if it's important, get it sorted out now or get it sorted out this week. Because I cannot guarantee a reply in time. Okay. So let me talk about some some particulars about how the exam is going to be graded at the end of the day. You know, there are going to be um, five questions, and you have to choose three of these questions. And for each question, you can get up to 25 points, including five points for overall quality of writing instruction. Yeah, so that's something that I will value. You know, if you write, if you write, I don't know, well, you know, if you have a good structure in your, in your reply, in your answer, that gives you points. So, so write, write well. That's, it, it is important, you know? and oftentimes people people don't know how to write, you know? which is a shame. You know, in the ideal world, I can tell you how my ideal world looked like. In the ideal world, we would have the opportunity, or I would have the opportunity as an educator to give undergraduates like you guys weekly feedback on your writing. That's what I had, yeah. and um, it's incredibly, incredibly helpful because you really improve. You really improve very quickly and you pick up on things and your arguments get better, your writing gets better, and at the end you, uh, you just learn how to write, you know? how, to, how to write an essay, how to set up an argument, how to, how to present an idea, right? how to be convincing in what you say, how to discuss things 
and how to put it in context, how to address limitations and uh, directions for, for future studies and so on. So that's something that in, I don't know, I don't know the Irish education system well enough yet, but uh, I, I see that here at the university it's, it's not really there. Uh, partly because it's just difficult to give feedback, you know, it's difficult to give a hundred folks feedback. It's just tough. Yeah, I don't know, it's just hard. So um, oftentimes it doesn't happen, but in the ideal world it would happen all the time. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, so 25 points, including five points for overall quality of writing and structure. But then also you can get some extra points. You know, this is sort of where these additional readings come into play. Right, if you throw in, uh, I don't know, some knowledge from the from the um, from the required readings here, you know, this sort of clearly is going to be valued in here. I might value it even a little more. I haven't decided about that about that yet. Yeah. But additional knowledge always is always rewarded. Yeah. So if you go for the minimal approach, I don't know, you can do that, but but well, then you're going to get a minimal grade, right? So that's, that's just how it is. I can only give you points for stuff that I see. Okay, well, I keep common and fair play. You know, that just goes without saying. Um, you're old enough. Who am I to tell you these things? Um, besides, you know, it's really not worth it. You know, uh, you get, you get uh, penalized. Plagiarism is... Uh, um, um, or, or, or cheating in exams is uh, uh, is persecuted, uh, prose prosecuted, and um, it just doesn't help you. Right? So why are you coming here and spend a little money for I don't know for copy stuff from others? It just doesn't make sense. Anyway, so um, okay, so you go to the exam. It's the 18th or the 19th of May. God, I already forgot the date. Um, you go there, you sit down, you get your exam, what do you do? Well, you read very closely the instructions and the questions. Why am I emphasizing this? Because people are nervous or people don't read properly and then they jump over stuff and then, you know, they just mix it up, you know, I don't know, they, uh, like in the, in, the, in the assignment, you know, there were, were several candidates who, um, who, who gave me three examples of the suicidal prophecy, but only described one. So what am I going to do, right? There's a perfect description, full points on that, but there are no descriptions for the second or the third example. Why? Because the, exa the, the question was not closely read. Or well, I don't know, uh, it's just so it really pays to sit down, take your time at the beginning, and um, make sure that you understood the questions and also the instructions. Yeah? So these five minutes at the beginning, really, really paid. This is a two hour long exam, so you should have enough time, two hours is quite some time, for answering three questions. Yeah. So roughly, um, I don't know, a little less than uh, 40 minutes uh, each, something like that. And uh, so take your time for answering the questions and uh, also for having a look at this stuff before. Two hours, so keep track of time. Uh, another thing that I sometimes observe, but hopefully it's not going to happen here because it should be, should be plenty of time. Uh, people focus on one question and then they run out of time, right? And then, I don't know, uh, they, they cannot answer all of the questions. Some questions uh, just fall, fall under. And um, the other questions are perfect, you know, great, full points, but, but I can give you zero points for the question you, you didn't answer. So keep track of time and make sure that you answer all of the questions or three that you have to do. So you get five questions in total and you can choose three. Right? So the ones that you, I don't know, feel more comfortable about, go with them. All questions will be weighted equally. So for each one of them, there will be the same amount of points that you could potentially get. You know, it's a 25 plus uh, three. Um, extra points that you could potentially get. So three questions, three questions, answer, three questions, three questions. Let me emphasize this. It's really a pity if, it, if you don't. Well, it makes my life easier. I only have to uh, mark one question, right? But you really, 
screw it up and uh, it's so unnecessary. Okay, grading. Um, another thing, I can only grade the stuff that I can read. Right? Nowadays, it's kind of funny, you know, I hardly write, do handwriting myself. Nowadays, we type everything. Once in a while, I write a letter yeah, to somebody who is really important to me. That's sort of then, then what, I, what, I, what I do, or postcards or stuff. But nowadays, we don't really write that much with our hand anymore. And um, so, you know, if I can't read anything, it's just let me tell you how this works. So I'm going to sit there, you know, with my glass of wine, and uh, I sit there over your exams uh, at the end of May after I come back from my, from my great trip in Spain. And then I sit there, I go through the exams, and there's a lot of exams to grade, and then uh, I cannot read your handwriting, I'm going to read over it. That's just what happens, right? As much as I would dig then in and really understand that, uh, there's time pressure. Um, it's not just me, that's also you know, what, what, what happens with, with other folks where you write exams when uh, you easily lose points for, um, for writing in a way that is incomprehensible or even at the very basic level it just cannot be read. Yeah. So again, it's sort of completely unnecessary to, to write in there. Write in something that I can understand. You know, I speak a whole bunch of languages actually, but I don't speak ancient uh, Egypt you know, or hieroglyphs. I don't speak Irish either. So, so don't, don't do that. Apparently I'm even terribly in pronouncing Irish names. So I really, I'm really bad with that. Still confused about letters popping up and disappearing. You know, there are names and, and there are sort of suddenly sounds that are not written down there at all. And people always wonder, who is Thomas talking about? But um, getting there. Structure your argument. You know, as I said, you get some points for that, up to five points. Uh, you, can, you can lose a lot of points by, by just having a, a, a very bad structure in, in your reply. So it's worth thinking, you have the time, you have the time, you have two hours in total to answer three questions. You have the time to think about how you're going to answer your question first before, before you jump into that, right? Okay. So how are those exam questions going to look like? Yeah. So what are, do you have to expect? So, um, you know, I'm aware this is the first time this course is being offered, so you don't have a chance to have a look at previous exam questions. So what I, um, what I have here now are some mock-up mock -up example exam questions. So these are not exam questions. Yeah? Let me emphasize that. But um, these are questions. This is sort of how previous exams could have looked like. There could have been five questions, you know, but... Uh, uh, let's say now I selected these three, and um, this is sort of the kind, the kind of questions that you have to expect. You know, like the first one, why does the aggregate not always tell you about the individuals? Describe Simpson's paradox and give three examples of where it matters. Yeah. By now, after, after the assignment, after the assignment, this should be, this should be understandable. But there we go, you know, it connects to one of the required readings, to the article about the, the study in, um, in Berkeley. Right, so this is sort of where you can, where you can add points, uh, where you can gain points. That's one example, example questions that we have here. Second one, you know, describe at least four components of analytical sociology according to the definition given by Manso. We had a whole lecture on this, remember? There's a whole lecture on what is analytical sociology. He had more than four elements in it. Right? There was also, um, it's also um, of the required readings. There were two required readings, more into uh, what is analytical sociology. You know, what are the elements in there? So, um, so there are different things that you can pick up here. You know? And then elaborate on them. What do they mean? Yeah? I don't know. In this case. I don't know, complex systems, you know, uh, interdependencies, networks, um, mechanisms. Um, what else? Macro outcomes, yeah. micro-level behavior, macro outcomes, dynamics. So these are sort of the things that would, uh, that would fit in here. But when you go back to the lecture, I think um, you know, I spend a lot of time um, on, on the definition by Manso. And uh, it's funny that the light is changing here. Yeah. Um, 
So um, this is all based on the lecture. Yeah. So this is all stuff that we talked about at some point. Another example question that we have at the end, what is segregation and, and why can it come about even when everybody wants integration? Explain. Well, we spent three lectures on segregation. Three lectures. So you can put things together about what is important in this lecture and what is less important in that lecture. Right? So um, that's something that we really spent some time on for, for some good reasons. Um, so you would have three lectures to go back to. Describe what segregation is, you know, and then why can it come about even when everybody wants integration? That's sort of now really probing into the social dynamics that we have there. So I want you to explain segregation dynamics to me. Yeah. How segregation dynamics come about, how do they operate, what are the implications, and so on. So in doubt, when you are in doubt, uh, as I said, uh, write, write a little more to the questions because that just means I can, I can find more nuggets in there that I can give you, give you good points. If you just give me a short reply, I, I'm, I'm forced to give you an equally short, uh, low grade. Okay. So some other, some other advice, um, how to get prepared for this. Well, obviously the best way is to revisit the lectures. You know, I think it's, uh, oh no, I would have loved to have uh, uh, not just lecture slides, but also the opportunity when I study to go back to what the, what the dude was actually saying. So you have that opportunity, right? So you can go back, you know, um, I didn't do this just for you. I also wanted to, to, to record what I was saying yeah, so that I know what the hell was I talking about. So, um, but, uh, you know, I, I think you have this opportunity to go, to go back or if you have any questions, you know, you study something and hang on, what, what did the education dynamics mean? You know, what, what was that all about? Now you can go back and, and listen to it. So everything that I can do now uh, would, be, would, be, would be less and uh, a less a complete or full answer than what I already talked about. Right? So if you have some questions, go back, have a look at this stuff. So hence also, um, nothing in the exam will come as a surprise. Nothing in the exam will come as a surprise. It's all, it's all based on what I talked about. You know? So I will not ask you stuff that we didn't talk about. Well, it will be a surprise if you, I don't know, if you didn't come to the lectures or if you didn't didn't listen to stuff or I don't know didn't catch up on the on the lectures afterwards in no way then it will be a surprise but then help you God anyway um, so nothing should become as a surprise most lectures were based on some readings that you were supposed to read before the lectures I always announced that we also had the syllabus um, if you kept up with the readings as you should have it will be much easier for you to, visit this, to revisit this material now. If you didn't do that, um, you have some catching up to do. I keep in mind, time is running fast. Um, make your schedule for when you are going to do what. These things take some time. I know there are other exams and so on. So, so get organized. Now really is the time to get organized. So now really is, if you haven't started exam preparation now, you. You, you have to start. Right? That's just my advice for you right now. You have to, you have to start. Not just uh, for my lecture, but for all the other stuff. If you push this and if you play this like in, I don't know, like you might have done in school. You know, I was one of those candidates as well. I sometimes started, at, I don't know, at 10 in the night to prepare for the exam the next day. It worked out, you know, but uh, it only works out so far. At university, it doesn't really work out anymore. Yeah. That's just because, as you might have noticed, the, the, the material is just too much. Uh, it's just a whole term. It's not, I don't know, three weeks and you write an exam about something or you read some 20 pages and you write an exam about something. God, we had 20 pages readings for almost every lecture. Yeah? Or we had, um, you know, the required readings. If you look at them, I think at the end it's seven or eight uh, required readings. Uh, this, is, this is more than, than, I don't know, that you might have been used to. It's just, just how university goes, you know, we don't have... We don't have assessments, we don't have exams all the time. We have one end of term exam and we are assessing the whole thing. The whole thing. Okay, um, so especially the required readings, that's sort of um, where you can really gain some points. 
also helpful to re revisit the assignments, but it's always helpful you know, in all of the courses, all of the classes that you take. Um, so that can be useful as well. Okay, so what I have now, are there any exam-related questions? You know, like um, whatever, some administrative stuff or other things. You can also just raise your hand, you know, there are not too many of us here. So this is the time now. Yep. Is that all just essay style answers? Yes. Essay style answers. Well, I might not necessarily require introduction, blah, 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 and so on, but, but this is how you structure your answer. Yeah. You have uh, an introduction, you have a main body where you present your argument and you have a conclusion. That's, um, that's always a good idea, but especially you know, for an exam like this where you have uh, almost 40 minutes to, to answer the question. So um, that definitely helps. You know, as I said, structure gives you some points. So if you structure that nicely, that helps. Always think about how this is going to be graded. You know, I'm going to sit there, as I told you, with my glass of wine. And, uh, you know, and then when you present me a nice structure, it's just really so much easier for me to understand, to grasp that in a way. And it's just much faster how to convince others. And, you know, that's the uh, whole point of this, of this lecture anyway, you know, that um, there's no mumbo jumbo. Uh, so I don't like mumbo jumbo. I don't like, like dilly dallying around. So be clear, be precise, and be structured in what you give me. I'm going to value that. Any other exam related questions? You know, there are no stupid questions. You know, I don't know. This, Better now than, than, than be sorry afterwards. No. Okay, well, if you uh, do have some um, administrative questions, as I said, get in touch with the undergraduate administrator. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, you can get in touch with me until the beginning of next week. After that, I'm not going to be available anymore as much as I would like to. But I have other things to do. Uh, and um, on Wednesday, I will come back to the things that you brought up. Right? So I will dig back into, into, into the lectures that we had. And uh, here we are. Let's see. I might talk. Social networks came up a bunch of times. Well, obviously, you know, we had two lectures on social networks. So again, you kind of make out of that what you want. Um, segregation came up. Again, we had three lectures on segregation. You make out of that what you want. Mm. Coleman's boat, you know, that's sort of the general general thing about analytical sociology. I might come back to that. And the broken glass theroy. The broken glass theroy. Um, yeah, it's actually it's a broken window. <laughs> Broken window uh, theory, I will come back to that one. So broken window theory, social networks, and segregation. That's what I'm going to talk about on Wednesday. Okay, well, thanks so much, guys. See you on, no, on Thursday. Thursday, God, I'm confused. Thursday, last lecture. How exciting, how exciting is that? Okay, see you on Thursday.